For more on what we can expect from Iran's next president, let's speak now with Professor Nader Hashimi. He is director at the Center for Middle East Studies at the University of Denver. Uh, thanks for your time today, Professor. So there have been six rounds of nuclear talks between Iran and world powers this year that haven't yielded much. Another meeting has not been set, and Raisi has not shown any signs of urgency in getting this deal done. So where do we stand now? How likely are we going to see a return to compliance with the 2015 nuclear deal under this president? Well, we're at a critical moment, uh, as you just indicated. Uh, there's been six rounds of negotiations. Most of the major issues have been agreed upon. I think there's about 5% remaining issues that have, pres that have proven to be um, very difficult to resolve. Uh, and the great concern, at least for many of us in the international community, who desperately want to see a revival of this nuclear deal, is that the incoming Raisi administration will appoint its own negotiating team that will be much more hardline in terms of their belief that if they adopt a tougher position, they can get greater sanctions, they can get greater um, concessions from the United States, thus delaying any resolution of this problem. So I think the next few months are going to be very critical. If there's no agreement, uh, I would say by, you know, at late the end of this, this uh, calendar year, then I think the agreement will be effectively over and we're headed, headed for some very dark and difficult days between Iran and the United States. And Professor, this inauguration also comes amid this new flare-up you know, following the deadly drone attack on the tanker in Arabian Sea. The U.S. says it's consulting with the U.K., Israel, and uh, Romania in this collective response while Iran is totally dismissing this allegation. W would a push for a confrontational approach by the West likely to make Raisi blink? Uh, no, it won't. It'll actually, in many ways, uh, play into his hands because the entire worldview of Raisi and his primary backer in Iran, Iran's supreme leader, is that uh, tensions with the West are um, forever going to be a reality of Iran's relationship with the outside world. Um, I think there's a connection, though, that I want to point out between this attack on the tanker and the stalled nuclear negotiations. Uh, the timing here is quite uh, revealing, and I don't think it's an accident. I think Iran is very much sending a message to the United States that unless it gets the deal that it wants, unless it gets more concessions from the United States at the bargaining table, Iran has the ability to step up these types of attacks. Uh, and so um, um, the longer the deal remains unresolved, the more the likelihood of similar attacks in and around the Persian Gulf, and thus uh, increased tensions between Iran and the Western world. That's a troubling observation, Professor. Uh, after he was elected, Raisi expressed that one of his priorities would be to improve ties with regional countries. What are you expecting to see on the diplomatic front, and also how more deeply involved do you think Iran is going to be in Afghanistan? Well, there's actually been some good reporting um, and some positive developments in terms of Iran's, you know, um, longstanding rival, rivalry with Saudi Arabia. Uh, there's been a series of meetings uh, between the two countries. There's rumor that at the inauguration of the new Iranian president this week, uh, Saudi Arabia might send a representative and, and embassies might be reopened in um, the capital cities of both countries, thus you know, reestablishing diplomatic relations. Um, so on that front, there's some good reporting. In terms of Afghanistan, I don't think Iran really has um, a lot to be concerned about. I think they're happy to see American troops leave. Uh, a Taliban delegation has been recently in Tehran visiting on numerous occasions um, to deal with um, you know, regional relations with, the, um, with the, their, their, their neighbor. Um, uh, and so I think Iran very much is, is you know, looking to have some sort of you know, detente with an incoming Taliban government that unfortunately looks like it's about to capture the entire country.
And Professor, before we let you go, the new president also inheriting an economy which has been crippled by the sanctions, the pandemic, structural issues. How is Raisi going to address the country's economic recovery? And do you think he can fix it? It's a tall order. I mean, Iran's economic uh, situation has never been as bad as it is today. And much of it hinges on the fact that Iran is under severe um, uh, uh, sanctions from the United States. So the economic recovery is heavily dependent on a resolution of um, the nuclear uh, agreement, which currently is in limbo, and it's unclear whether the, you know, the details can be negotiated. So these two things are deeply linked, and I think this is the big dilemma for the Islamic Republic of Iran. You know, how does it um, uh, get to a nuclear agreement that will lift sanctions, thus allowing for the economy to recover, hoping it will quench and crush rising public anger in Iran. There's been protests happening um, uh, in recent weeks over the situation in the province of Khuzestan. People there don't have water to drink. Uh, there's growing anger over a you know incoming internet censorship bill that will block Iranian, uh, Iranian citizens' access to the internet. So there's a lot of problems that the regime is facing internally from a population that is deeply upset and deeply does not consider the ruling regime to be you know legitimate. And the only hope for the regime is to try and revive the economy. And that's, of course, dependent on the nuclear negotiations. So these are very difficult days for the Islamic Republic of Iran. A pleasure having you on the program today. Professor Nader Hashemi from the University of Denver. Thank you.